morning i am in a car park in waltham abbey because i am going today to the waltham abbey wall show i've got a mark on my lens i'll have to clean that off in a minute hopefully you can't see that i'm just in the car park i'm quite early because i'm always early i can't be late <laughs> which means i'm always waiting uh, but i've agreed to meet my friend in about 10 minutes my friend sarah who is yarn mugs on youtube uh, we're going to meet in the car park because uh, we're not due to be in until 10. It's half past nine now. and But we want to see Jan Jeanette Sloan opening the, uh, you know, doing the opening of the show. I don't know what that was. Snipping of ribbons. I don't know if she'll actually snip a ribbon. Uh, yeah, so very excited to see her. And just really excited to be at a yarn show, really. It's been so long since I've been to one. I get really nervous going to them for some ridiculous reason. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited to see lots of yarn and squish lots of yarn and maybe buy lots of yarn or just some yarn and spend a bit of time with Sarah as well. It'd be lovely. I found Sarah. Hello. We parked literally one car Lit away from each other in the car park. And now we're going to go in. We're excited. We're very excited. I like your jumper. Thank you. Yeah. What one is that? Um, it's a vintage L lacy jumper oh, but made out of travel knitter yarn and she's here Larissa oh, yeah, so I wanted here. to show I wanted to show her because it's so lovely. Let's oh, go. Yeah, let's go. There's a queue I think. Okay, let's go into the Waltham Abbey Wool Show. We stopped off at Alison's stall, Sheepy Things first. I really liked her worry sharing sheep. I thought those were a sweet idea. And here we are at Woolly Chic, Helen. She developed an eco yarn called Heart Spun, which is made with blue face Leicester and tensile, which is derived from wood, I believe. She's got them in these gorgeous colours. I was so pleased that one of my favourite dyers, Third Vault Yarns, was there. Look at this beautiful colourway. So many beautiful colours. Uh, Sarah and I were both avoiding four ply yarn. We both wanted to buy something a bit heavier weight. I spotted this right at the beginning and later on I came back and it was still there and I bought it. Brambles and me, a new to me dyer. I've not seen them before. Her name's Mia. She came down from North East England. She uses all natural dyes and no nylon. And her colours were absolutely beautiful and her sock sets I really enjoyed because they all had completely contrasting minis with them. And she was wearing the most gorgeous naturally dyed penguano. I've never seen yarns you like before. This is Marcia and she has lots of eco yarns including soy cotton and recycled denim and corn yarn. I was really fascinated with this store and I wish that I'd gone back and bought more than I actually did and I'll show you later in the vlog what I did buy. Allium Threads is Nikki. They specialise in natural dyes as well. They had some really cute little samples in embroidery hoops to show you what it looks like. I thought this mohair loop looked interesting. I don't know what I'd make with it though. Snuggly Stars Yarns, who is Gemma, her stall was absolutely lovely. She dyes a variation of this yarn every year for her wedding anniversary. She had some lovely things. I really wish I'd gone back. I particularly wish I'd bought this pin. Very me. And she was also selling the Lula Bella Knits pattern that raises money for Crohn's and Colitis UK, the Duvet Day Socks. Adventures in Yarncraft is Laura and she's from Birmingham. She had a whole wall 
full of absolutely gorgeous <laughs> colours. Look at those. Ainsworth and Prin is the yarn brand sold by the Knitting Shed, or rather dyed and sold by the Knitting Shed, who are Nicola and Louise. They had a whole stall just full of these gorgeous, calming, wonderfully muted, rich colours. They also write and sell patterns. This one here is called ticklish. Another new to me dyer was Andrew at the Yarn Whisperer. He had a lovely collection of zebra yarns, which were all dyed inspired by tarot cards. And I really love these. And if you don't know, this is the first time I've seen it. Zebra yarn is mulled with a strand of black and it knits up really beautifully. You can just see it on the hat there. More new to me dyers, Wiku Yarn is sisters Hannah and Lydia from London and they dye stunning yarn. It's inspired by their Ghanaian heritage and Wiku means family in their dad's native language. I went back two or three times to browse through their yarn. I really, really regret not buying some. Urgh. Post yarn show regret. And of course we had to stop at Travel Knitter, Larissa, because Sarah's jumper was made from Travel Knitter yarn and she had her photo taken with the yarn in question. There she is. Romney Marsh Wools is a Kent-based uh, operation. They're about an hour from us in Kent towards the South Kent coast. And they run holidays in shepherd's huts on their farm. Orchardine Luxury Yarns, I hope I'm saying that right. The dyer is Abby and she's from Wiltshire and this is one of her patterns, the Eiffel Tower sweater and I love this, I'm definitely going to make one. Sarah's actually got the exact yarn for this which is really lovely, I love that luminous speckling. Another East London dyer, Helen at the Wall Kitchen. She had so many beautiful samples. We spent quite a long time looking at these uh, jumper samples and working out how many balls of yarn I might need if I wanted to make it. This is the Amma sweater by Maddie Harvey. It's really lovely. I love that neckline. And I didn't know, but I learned that yarn like this where you have just a flash of colour is called zip yarn. All the way from the Isle of Wight, we have Lilliput White, that's Jo, and she makes notions, buttons and stitch markers and so on from driftwood and sea glass. Fruitful Fusion, oh, another one I went back to about three times and I so nearly bought this forest colourway, but I just couldn't work out how much I would need. I'm going to have to knit a few garments before I can commit and I'll talk about this a bit later. I mainly filmed these so I could remember these two colourways because I was in love with them so much. She had an absolutely beautiful stall. I follow Ishrat on Instagram and it was so nice to meet her in person. And she had some lovely samples made up too. One of the best things about going to a yarn festival is being able to not only see the yarn up close and meet the dyers who are so knowledgeable, but to see all the samples of different patterns and get an idea of how they really look in, in real life. Now this was exciting. I happened to walk past the BIPOC in fibre stand just as Jeanette Sloan was there and look, she's signing my book. She was so lovely. River Knits, this is their Chimera or Chimera, or I don't know how you say it, their mould yarn, so beautiful. And their famous giant squirrel yarn. And the famous River Knits rainbow wool. We love it, isn't that amazing? And a quick stop for lunch. This was all I filmed because we spent the whole time gobbling things up quickly to go back and do our second round and start purchasing. 
the crafty bird who is Robin, crochet queen, dyer and pom-pom maker extraordinaire. Look at this wall of pom-poms. I think this was the most fun I had filming. Filming pom-poms is fun. <laughs> and I did buy one, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh -huh. I like filming pom-poms. They look amazing. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. What time is it, Sarah? It's nearly four, nearly four o'clock. <laughs> it's nearly four o'clock. We have been here for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like we've been here for about 45 minutes. I know. We've got our money's worth. We definitely um, had a lovely, lovely day. We met so many lovely people. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Hello, everyone that came up and chatted to us and gave us compliments. Yeah. And, and to Jess, who we met when we were yeah, sitting having our cup Jess. of tea. She was lovely. Get that pattern out, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> she was wearing the most amazing cardigan that she'd made up herself. Yeah. And she said she would think about writing it up because we both want to make it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just everyone we met was lovely. Met Jeanette Sloan and I bought her book. I'll show you what I bought when I get home. Oh. And you'll have to watch Sarah's podcast to see what she bought. Yeah, I might show you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, been, it's been super, super lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we're going nice, to have a nice day out. perfect January day. I'd recommend it to anyone because I'd never been to this show before and it was yeah, yeah. lovely, really lovely, good mix. Lots mix. different and lots of yeah, nice environment. And really nice bit in the middle where you can just go and take a seat. Yeah, isn't it? So perfect. We've had the perfect day. Mm. <laughs> and just to round off a perfect day, I had a lovely light show in the form of a beautiful sunset as I drove back over the QE2 bridge to Kent. Right, I am home and I'm going to show you what I purchased. You may hear yelling in the background because Phoebe's in the front room with her earphones on, playing Roblox with her friends, and they're all chatting at the same time, which involves a lot of yelling. So it was absolutely brilliant to get out to a yarn festival today. I think it was 2019 was the last one I went to. Let me go and shut the door. Oh, sorry about that. I just went and shut the living room door because um, obviously things are getting very um, exciting in their game. They're playing something called Flicker. I think that's what it's called. I think it's like a murder mystery type thing. Anyway, they find it very entertaining. So the Waltham Abbey Wool Show. Here is their leaflet that we picked up. There were quite a few exhibitors who were sadly unable to attend for various reasons, mainly um, COVID, uh, COVID testing, uh, family members or themselves. So they weren't able to make it, which was a shame, but uh, hopefully we will see them at other yarn shows in the future. But the people that were there were absolutely amazing. We met so many lovely people. I got to meet people I follow on Instagram uh, for the first time and actually be able to talk to them and squidge yarn and chat to them about things. And we met other people just, you know, as we were walking around, other stall holders, people we were just bumped into it and it was we just had such a fun day it was the perfect thing to do on a cold january day we had lots of fun so the list of exhibitors was quite lengthy as you can see and the way it was set out was brilliant because you had the um the, the refreshments areas in the middle and then you had the workshops and all different stalls on either side so you kept walking through the central atrium which is where you can stop sit down you know catch up with yourself get a cup of tea and all of that so it, it just made the whole day so lovely and relaxing so i will show you we did a whole lap uh, and then we sat down and had a cup of tea and then we did another lap and started purchasing so the very first thing i purchased was from a store i've never seen before it's called yarns you like natural eco-friendly and sustainable yarns so that's her details on her bag there. So I've got a nice recyclable brown uh, paper bag, which I shall reuse before I recycle it. I'm gonna keep the yarn in it for a while. And she sold some really interesting yarn and I was really tempted actually to buy another one of her yarns because they, she had sugar cane yarn, which is a viscose basically. And there's a little thing about how it's made. Uh, popcorn yarn, which was 100% um, corn fiber. And she had this recycled denim yarn as well. And she also had soybean cotton, soybean cotton and so on. I really wanted to buy some of the corn yarn, um, but maybe next time, maybe next time. She had some lovely colors, but I completely 
cleared her out of this one because I got the final four balls that she had of this dark blue. It's called Rosar Rosarios 4 Reuse. It's an eco-friendly collection and it is recycled denim. So she had this in quite a few colours. It's not. It's going to be hard to get it to come up true to colour because I am in false lighting now because obviously it's completely dark now which means I need to go and shut the chickens away in their coop in a second. And uh, she had a lighter blue of this and a beigey colour and a grey. And she had a little sample knit up to show how it knits up. And that's what really sold it to me. It was absolutely beautiful. I really loved the idea of having a cardigan or a jumper knit out of this. It was $5.99 a ball. which me And I bought four balls. So for about just under £24, I've got 400 grams of DK weight yarn. Uh, which I'm really excited about and I really wanted a nice basic staple colour that I know I'll reach for time and time again so I'm really looking forward I want to find either a cardigan or a jumper that I've already got in my library or go and find one specifically and I got lots of ideas from the show today from looking around and I'll put a couple of pictures up on the screen of uh, samples that we saw on various stalls there was the bee bat tea that we saw the um, oh, I'm going to start saying names or trying to remember names and getting it wrong. The Amma sweater um, was another one and oh, I can't remember any of them now but ones I can remember I'll put on the screen as I've been talking. So they're all good candidates. I think it was the Amma sweater which is the one, if I'm saying that right, that has um, a really nice detail across the front here which I thought would look lovely in a nice bright contrast yarn with this dark blue. So I might do that, although I'm tempted to also make a cardigan. We shall see, but I'm very excited about it. Um, we stopped by Third Vault Yarns as well. Uh, I really wanted to buy some of Lola's yarn. I know I've spoken about her a lot before on the podcast, but I really like her yarn. I really like the colours she chooses um, and the way she dyes and I wanted to go back and get something a bit chunkier because I've only ever had the four ply weight from her and I did buy some DK for Dan I'm looking at it over there because he's we're getting ready to ball it up so he can start learning to knit a hat and I got myself some of her worsted weight it's called oh is it Gaitha or Githa that's there's the ticket so that's her worsted weight base I really struggled to say this word unfathomable unfathomable <laughs> Unfathomable Depths is the colourway name and it's 100% Superwash Falklands Merino um, and it's really soft and lovely. So I bought this thinking this is going to be a hat. I think it'll be lovely, I think it'll knit up beautifully. She had a few samples of similar colourways. I'm going to get this. Then we went to the A Crafty Girl stand where she had some amazing kits and yarn. Sarah bought some yarn um, from her. And I realised that she was the girl that I bought my beloved pom-pom from at Fibre East in 2019. And I could never remember who it was I bought it from. Anyway, it turns out it was a crafty girl. So I bought another fabulous pom-pom and she had a whole wall of these that you would have seen in the footage. They're faux fur and she, on Instagram, she is the crafty bird 22. There we go. And between Sarah and the owner of a craft, the Crafty Girl, I'm afraid I don't know her name. I'll have to look it up on Instagram. We picked this one to go with my um, third fault yarns because I think that is going to be fabulous. So now I have an entire project to look forward to. I'm going to knit a chunky hat with a fabulous pom-pom. Brilliant. Can't wait. Then I, hang on, what was the next thing I bought? Oh yes, then I stopped by my friend Jo, who is Pickle Lily. So I wanted to get my, uh, so my cousin's son <laughs> has had another baby with his wife. And um, yeah, every member counts, we're a very small family. So uh, basically it's like a, a niece type figure in my life. And they've got two little girls now and I'm gonna send a little present for the new baby. And I wanted to send something for their older child who's about two years old. So I bought her one of uh, Pickle Lily's uh, I Spy bags. I absolutely love these. She does. She's a teacher and she really thinks about every type of 
way that children learn and interact with things. So not only have we got the I Spy bag, which is where you can you, you fiddle about with all the stuff in this pocket and you can find the little things that are inside. He's just poking his head out there, there's the bear. And you've got a little card that tells you all the things that are in there to find. And then on the back, it gives you the nursery rhyme that you can sing with your child. So for the bear, it has um, teddy bear's picnic, or we're going on a bear hunt, or round and round the garden. So you can then sing the nursery rhymes with your child. And I thought that was absolutely lovely. So I'm gonna send that up to Scotland um, as a little present for Ava. And while I was there, she said, I'm gonna give you a little present. And she popped something really quickly in the bag. I didn't even get a chance to see what it was. And it's this, and it's so beautiful. She makes a lot of project bags and notions pouches as well. So with this beautiful bird fabric, and I love that it's got a robin on it because obviously robins have featured quite a lot the last few months. And all these British birds. And it's got a tape measure ribbon. And do the ribbon, wraps around twice, and you open it up, and it's a little notions pouch. Keep your scissors and your bits and bobs in there, and then it just does up with the ribbon again like that, and you just tie it gently. And um, I think that is fantastic. I might use it as a notions pouch, or I've actually got another little use in mind for it, which I shall share on a future vlog, probably over on my other channel. So watch over there if you're wondering what I'm going to do with it. I then stopped by Tilly Flop and uh, uh, Jenny, my sister, if you're watching, don't look at this because this is for you. My sister's a huge Jane Austen fan and she's a knitter. So I thought that this was perfect for her. Um, Jen, look away for about 30 seconds. I won't read it out. I'll hold it up to give you enough time to read it out. So you can see it's a, a Jane Austen reference, but uh, from a knitting point of view. Brilliant, isn't it? So I got that for my sister. And then, so Jeanette Sloan opened the um, show, so she cut the ribbon and made a little speech. And she also judged this year's competition, which this year was Amigurumi. And yeah, it was really sweet to see everyone lined up with their um, makes. And she chose the winner, which I think was a piglet, a piglet Amigurumi. And then she was on the stand um, of the BIPOC in fibre stand. So I got one of her, one of their pins uh, for BIPOC in fibre. She was there for a couple of hours and it just so happened she was there as we were walking past. And I hadn't realised at all until I saw it on the desk. But she has put together a new book with Kate Davies or Kate Davis um, called Warm Hands. And obviously the cover struck me because it's yellow. <laughs> And I loved those gloves on the front. So I stopped and thought, oh, that looks interesting. I'll have a little flick through. There's 15 patterns in here. And I opened the first page and I saw this. Again, yellow dress, but look at those. Look at those. So I saw those and I immediately thought that my eldest daughter, my teenager, Lilia, would love those. So I thought, oh, she'd like those. So I kept flicking through. And I really like the next pair. And I really like the next pair. And then there was a pair of mittens that had daisies on the top. And I really love those. So I kept flicking through. And I loved the next pair. And I loved the next pair. And then there was a pair of gloves. And I thought, I've never made gloves. I'd like to try those. And before I knew it, I got all the way through all 15 patterns and I hadn't seen one single pair of mittens, gloves or hand warmers that I didn't want to make. There's all different designers in here. I don't know if there's a list of designers. Page 180. Oh yeah, so there's a big long list here of the 15 uh, designers that contributed to the book, including uh, Kate Davis and Jeanette Sloan themselves and oh Sylvia of Sylvia Watts Cherry who I follow on Instagram and so many other names that I recognize and don't recognize so I'm going to have time a uh, fun matching names with people on Instagram later and honestly brilliant so I bought the book they had a special price for it for the show 
and I got the book and I'm so pleased that I did. It wasn't something I expected to get and I'm really pleased that I bought it and I can't wait to make some mittens with some of my stash this year. Um, so that was everything. Is that everything? Yeah, that's everything I bought. I did have money left over from the money I took with me because I did want to buy some sort of heavier weight yarn, DK or worsted to make a jumper, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't commit. I really want to make some more garments and, and so on and, and get a better feel for it so I know how much yarn I need to buy. So I'm going to get onto that, make some more garments, get a bit more knowledgeable and maybe at the next yarn show I'll be ready to um, buy like three or four skeins of yarn. I'll know how much to buy, three, four, five, whatever I need. So it was brilliant. What a lovely day. Now I'm going to go and put those chickens to bed and Dan's going to make us some dinner and we're going to put our feet up, watch around the world in 80 days and then the pottery we throw down. I'm going to have a nice hot milk and a biscuit. <laughs>